Now, I get lots of requests on uh, YouTube and uh, one was for a, a fly, an old pattern, uh, an old steelhead fly called the Skymush Sunrise, if I pronounce that right. And this is the one I'm going to be tying. It's a, it's a colour combination, it's much the same, it's the same colours and uh, just the materials change. I'm trying to keep the materials so that everyday material stuff you can buy, uh, you can like I'm using, I'm going to be using marabou and the tips of the marabou uh, you're looking for a reasonable golden yellow type colour now there's lots, I mean there's, you could use the bloods would be ideal I don't have any dyed yellow so I'm, I'm using just the large marabou feathers to get the tip, and there's the, the tip of the marabou feather so you've got a nice fine fibre and a nice long mobile fibre that you could easily use. So I'm going to be using that feather there. But anyway, I'll, I'll tie the fly. Now, first thing I'm going to start off, I'm going to put a tag on the fly, the uh, oval silver tinsel. Now, I've taken, this is just a white uni thread in 8 I've taken it down to, I'm in line with the point of the hook. Now, the hook is this one here. This is the Daiichi 2051. It's a 3 so it's obviously a large. You can tie these all sizes, do what you like, um, tying it big. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch on the side this is a small oval silver tinsel you could use a flat tinsel if you want now I've waxed the thread, it's really well waxed so there's plenty of grip for the, the oval tinsel so I'm going to come up around about maybe 4-5mm or so and then I'm going to wind touch and turns with the oval tinsel it's got to be nice and tight just bring it up so we are happy with the point where we caught it in, so we're going to actually catch in the, the waste end. Now that I usually quickly take the thread up, so that I want to try and keep the, ba the body balanced. Now I'm cutting that in line with the bent, the wire of the hook stops here, and then I'm going to come quickly back down. It doesn't take a lot to do that, it makes everything nice and tight and even. Now for the tail you could use just a natural uh, got cackle dyed red and yellow uh, I'm just using a golden pheasant skin got the rump at the top and and then I've got the red the breast so I've got the both of them so I've taken a feather from taking the rump feather yellow so what I'm going to do is just form enough fibre just tip, nip out the tip so I've got a right and a left same with the, the breast feather I'm just going to take out the tip we just need a few coloured fibres this keeps it more to the natural, kind of traditional spee D style type flies, which work extremely well nowadays as much as they did when they first, the first were tied. So, what I'm doing is laying one on top of the other. I'm just going to roll the fibre now, I'm going to make sure they're lined up first. So, roll the fibre, and then I tie this on the top so the natural curve comes up and away. This is how I tie the tails on, the fibres for these. See, it sets up like a nice, a nice shape. Again, you take your thread up. You trim it. You trim it just probably the length of the body. Nice and tight. Make sure that's secure. And the way down, I'm tying the same oval tinsel. This is going to be the rib. And the way down. All the way down. See, tidying things up as I go. The rim's going to be nice and tight. So, now the, the, the wide rib of the fly, I'm just going to use the Unimyla in a size 10, so it's quite a large tinsel. For this size of fly, you reduce it always to just suit. Most, most people can buy this, so. And then what we want to do is just going to cut a point into it. Just tie it in above the oval tinsel. Catch it. Oops. I want it to sit exactly where beside it, so just take your time at this point. Make sure there's wax on your thread. Make sure it's secure. 
Uh, what I'm going to do is, again, I'm just going to run the thread up. Seems like a bit of waste of materials, but it's not really. Uh, you'll end up with a nice, tight, strong fly. Now I'm just going to use, when there is no fly, they use the uh, red chenille. I'm just going to use a red wool. So there's three ply in this, there's three strands, so I'm going to take out one. I don't need the three. Now I've got obviously two line now because I've tied a couple. Can use that on the next fly. I'm going to tie this on the way down. Just open out fibre, wind down. Nice and tight. See how you can easily get the, the material right up against the tail and the tag. Bring it two thirds way back up because I'm going to tie in the marabou. Now you could tie the marabou in at the top here and just wind it. I want to wind a couple of turns, a turn or two, from this point here to, and then I want another turn near the uh, the eye just to thicken it up. Now, what I'm going to do is remove the marabou I don't need. Now, the marabou bloods are better because all you get when you buy the bloods, you get this tip of the, the marabou. You don't have to throw away all this, which I've just done. This makes for a great, a great fibre. I'm just going to run and moisten it. Makes it easier to basically control. So excuse me for doing that. So just that makes it marabou. It clings to everything. It's like a magnet to your fingers, fiber, everything. But it's a very mobile fiber. That's why we use it. So anyway, carry on. Got in the tip of the. Marabou and bring it up to this point, give yourself a good, see, five mil or so in this size of fly, just to hold it out of the way. Just hold it with a couple of turns with the thread, just so that you can control it. As I say, Marabou is like a magnet to your fingers and everything else. I'll just want to catch. Now I'm opening out the fibre. Now take your time at this point because you want it to spread these fibres. Just use your nail. So you don't end up with a, a lump. Not that the fish would mind, it's just... If you're going to spend a bit of time tying a fly, just take your time. Just wind up the wool. Nice bright red wool. I mean, it's a lovely coloured, this fly. It's a beautiful fly. You could certainly see it in a coloured water, okay. Now we're right beside where we'd cut in the marabou, so we take the two turns back. And then just drop the marabou to the back out of the way. And then we carry on up with the, the wheel. Take your time there. I'm twisting the wheel open as a wind so it helps it to, to lay flat. Now this is where you have to decide where to catch it in. So you've got a hackle to wind, you've got the, the marabou. You want at least a turn or so. The marabou at this point here, as well as I've got, a, I'm using a teal dyed red. So we take that away, tidy that area up. And again, we need to control this marabou. And bring it up. A couple of turns just to, as I say, control it, take it out of the way. Now, I want the silver side shown, and I'm going to wind the tinsel. This this is a weak tinsel, it's not as strong as the tinsels we get on a miler. Uh, you want to protect that, so we're going to cross rub it with the oval tinsel, which is the strongest. Now, there's three turns there. We come back with the turns of the, the tinsel, and then we do a turn in front of the, the marabou. So we get around about five turns or so, catch it in at the top. Now, to catch that in, we have to cross over the tinsel, then do a turn onto the, the, the actual hook, so we do the same again. And then we can trim away the waist. I'm going to bring the marabou further up. And this is where we just we have to take our time. Just pull these this back. Now you're not winding this to hold anything on. You're winding this to get the fibre. But you obviously want to wind it strong. I mean, really wind it so it's sitting right. Uh, so we just pull it back, but don't pull it like you're going to break it. Just follow the tinsel up behind the tinsel. Just keep going, just take your time, allow the fibre or the 
because it is a very mobile fibre, it'll want to slowly come with the stem. But just place the fibres where you want it to sit and use your fingers to draw, the, draw it back. Now as I say, I want a, a turn or two near the top. So we come round, just holding the fibre as I came round there. Come up. Keep going. And I say, just take your time. We want moisture on your fingers so that you can pull it back. The reason for winding, as I say, like this rather than just winding up the top, it spreads the fibre and gives it a bit more movement. So I'm going to do another turn here just to see how it's sitting. This is some of the best salmon flies. The early salmon flies were tied with eagle, so. Uh, it's just a big feather, tail feather, under the tail, these feathers were sitting similar to this. So this would be like a yellow eagle type colour. So two or three turns, just zigzagging through the stem, so it's held in. We can then trim away the stem, make sure it's nice and tight. Obviously wax the thread. Now at this point we have to make space for the, the rib to come up. Now the rib is coming the normal way, so we cross rib, as you can see, the tinsel as we come up, and we're going to cross rib the marabou feather. So I just have to hold towards, towards the end of the, the oval tinsel, keeping your fingers out of the way of the marabou, and making a space if you can, because you come through, all the way through, all I'm doing is encouraging it to come through, pulling back the fibre when I can. And then we can catch in the oval tinsel or rib, make sure it's nice and tight and secure because it is holding everything together. Draw away the excess, make sure there's wax on your thread. And there we are. And that's your, your marabou your hackle. Just to get an idea what it looks like, I'll blow it through with the hairdryer so you can see the movement. You see how it opens out nice. By winding it through like that it gives it a lot more body. Now the front hackle that I'm using, this is just some teal feathers dyed, dyed red. So I'm taking away the fluff Sure. Tie in by the tip. So I'm looking at the front of the hackle. Scratch in the tip, two or three turns, fold it back so it's secure. And then slip your fingers back and you'll see there's the tip of the tail feather there. We can then trim it away. And then we can actually fold straight turns, fold the fibres back and do one turn in front of the other, just encouraging it. I think that should be close to being enough. So I'm just going to take away this fibre, these fibres here which I can, just take them out of the way. And then follow up with the thread nice and tight and then put a 90 degree bend into the stem. Three or four turns now. It slipped a wee bit there, but we'll see where it's happened. Now, I'm going to move my thread. I'm just going to go back. Just at that point, it slipped, so I'm just going to go back. It's easy to go back. Times it sits better the second time. So, once you come through nice and tight, stroke it back. See how it's sitting a wee bit better, even. So, it does pay to go back. And then come in, catch that stem really nice and tight. See where we are. He's really happy with that, so then I can trim away the stem. Now change the thread over to black, just a uni thread. 
this guy's black, we'll have a black head on the fly. You can use a red head if you want, it's up to yourself. I'm just going to use the black. So I'm coming over the white and trimming away the waste piece of the black and the white thread. So wax on my thread, base the thread down that's nice and sticky for the wing. Just going to move these fibres around. Now, it seems to be okay. Just pulling this fibre through. That's fine. Now we're ready for the wing. Now I've got a... There's lots of things I could use. You could use hair on the top. Uh, you could use a feather wing, say from Turkey or so. But I'm going to use the tips of this. This is a Chinese cock neck. It's uh, obviously in white. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple hackles from this side and that side. So we've got a natural curve. Uh, take two off. From that side, two from the other. Now, we've got two from my side. So if you if you take two from either side, you'll see they naturally curve. They'll cover curve a certain way, so they'll cover with the fly. So when you sit them on, they sit nicer. So what I'm going to do is just start with my side first. The length of the wing, it can be as short as long as you like. Uh, I mean, quite short. I mean, just the. Uh, the back of the hook, the end of the hook there, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, you could have it slightly longer towards the end of the tail. It's, it's just depending on the style that you like. So I'm going to have it short, which is to basically the tips and just about in line with the, with the bar with the hook. So I'm going to make a space. I've got two feathers, one on top of the other here. So I'm going to catch this on the side. Nice and tight now. I've got well waxed thread here, so there's plenty of grip. Now we're happy positioned. I'm just going to take out the tips. Some wax on my thread. Make sure that's secure. Now we're ready for the other side. So I've got two feathers ready. Just make sure the tips are lined up. Pull the fibres away here so you can see what I'm doing. So we will check my length. Let it sit on the side. Come over two or three turns. See how we're sitting. It looks okay. Well, it's slightly on the side a wee bit, so I'm just going to move it. I want it more roof-like, so if I show you this from the this side. Yeah, well, it's not too bad. So then, when I'm happy with the position of the wing, I can then obviously make sure the or wax the thread. Keep a hold of the wing and really put tight turns in there. Form a head with the thread. Get straight in the whip finish. Trim away your thread, see how things are sitting. Looks okay. Wing looks fine. Now, what I'd normally do for speed is just use a super glue, it dries really quick. So I'll run round, don't be careful, you don't touch the, the feathers, you just want to touch the head. This dries really quick. To me, fine fibre there as always. There's always one. It's just allow that to dry five minutes. A couple of coats of varnish, and then that's that's it finished. If you enjoyed that, and please subscribe. Uh, it does help. And thank you for watching.